Oh yeah. So guys, which truck is riding on 42 inch tall tires, has an engine that produces over 1,150 pound feet of torque, and also happens to cost over $215,000. Well, it's this truck right here, the new Summit Hauler at TransWest, and it's a 4x4. And of course, in this video, I'm going to show you all the features, take it for a test drive, and let's figure out what makes this the most ultimate pickup truck in the world. This review is made possible by our friends at Trans West. This Summit Hauler is what they do and only they have it. So check them out using the link below if you want to learn more about this gigantic 4x4. When you look at this behemoth from the side, it looks fairly normal. It's got an engine in the front, it's got a big crew cab, four-door configuration, and it has a gigantic bed. By the way, this bed right here is about 11 feet long. It's way bigger than any heavy-duty pickup truck on the road. It's basically a semi four-wheel drive. It starts life as a Freightliner M2 chassis, and this truck right here, just with nothing in it, weighs about 16,500 pounds. So it weighs over eight tons just the way you see it here. There's only one way to show how big this truck is and I'm gonna use myself for size comparison. I'm just over 6'2", and this tire is just enormous. Um, let me just show you, uh, I can hug it. Okay, so that's, you know, three and a half feet in diameter, this tire is. If you compare it to any other pickup truck, like a Ford F250, which has about a 34 inch tall tire, this is about eight inches taller than that. It's massive, and just look how much higher the body is. I can actually crawl in here, and I can be inside the fender. I want to do two more tests in this video. First, a size comparison test. I did bring our Ford F250, just to put next to this truck and show you guys the differences, but also a turning radius test, because although this truck is massive, much longer and wider and taller than any other pickup truck on the road, it's supposed to turn remarkably well. Let's begin the size comparison with these two trucks. Over here I brought our brand new 2020 Ford F250 four-wheel drive. It's already a really big heavy-duty truck. Somehow it looks really tiny in comparison to this Summit Hauler 4x4. And what about length? Well, this F-250 Ford, it's a crew cab, and it has a standard bed, which means it's almost seven feet long. But the Summit Hauler is sticking out in the front, and the Summit Hauler is sticking out in the back by about two to three feet. If this doesn't show you how big the Summit Hauler truck is, I don't think anything will. I hugged the other wheel, so I have to hug this one also. This is basically a 33-inch tall tire. It's much easier. It's it's, I thought this was a big tire until I saw that big Freightliner. Oh yeah, it's time to get on the road, finally. So you might be wondering, who would buy such a truck? Who are the customers for this? Well, I asked this question to TransWest, the guys right here. And they said that primarily the customers are big farmers and ranchers who actually have a lot of land. For example, people from Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, people from big country where there are a lot of roads, a lot of dirt roads, and they have to haul really heavy trailers uh, from here to there, actually to support their businesses or you know, whatever they need to do with their cattle, horses, uh, maintain their uh, uh, farming equipment, etc., etc. So these trucks um, are good for that purpose. They're also good for hauling a giant boat, uh, not just because it's a cool truck, because it, it is cool, but also because you could uh, go on a slippery ramp 
and actually go up and down uh, without trouble because you do have all-wheel drive, you do have four-wheel drive, so you have all of those available to you. Right now I'm standing inside the engine bay of this beast and what's powering this truck is a 9 liter displacement straight 6 Cummins engine. It's not quite as big or powerful as a big semi truck that you see an 18 wheeler uh, going down the highway but it has plenty of oomph. 350 horsepower at 2000 rpm. It's also governed at 2200 rpm, so it doesn't like to rev very much. 1,150 pound-feet of torque, and this puppy has made it to a very, very heavy-duty version of the six-speed Allison automatic transmission. Beastly! And look at this, rear axle ratio, 489. This thing is geared very low for hauling heavy weights. This truck has not one, but two fuel tanks, 50 gallons of diesel on this side, on the driver's side, and another 50 gallons on the passenger side. Total 100 gallons. Right here, it's very easy to reach, really easy to fill up. You would probably do it at the truck stop where you have actually two nozzles, one on each side to fill up. It has a def tank, of course, so it's all nice and legal. And you might be getting between like eight and nine miles per gallon just kind of running this truck, maybe with a kind of a smallish trailer that weighs about 20,000 pounds. So it gets similar fuel efficiency as a big semi would. This Summit hauler conversion has this custom bed on the back. It's about 11 feet long. A regular dually pickup truck, you know, like an F350, would have an eight foot bed. This is just much larger and it's much bigger and it just looks great. But you can still carry a trailer. There is a gooseneck hitch right down here. And this custom bed has a lot of neat features too. And if you look inside, gigantic space, but also you have your lights so you can manage your accessories and cargo here at any time. These compartments are lockable so you can secure it. These latches go like this. And you know what? This might be big enough to accommodate me. Let me try. Okay, okay. Just a little bit more. Just a little. Gosh, I need to lose some weight. Actually, hey. Yeah, a big dude can uh, ride in here. Okay, so just need to get out. Okay, my right leg is a little stuck. Okay, up, okay. A smaller compartment here in the back. And there's also a very neat feature on the driver's side. Let me show you. On the driver's side, there's a really cool feature inside here. And it's this air connector. Basically, if you're at the lake, let's say you are hauling a gigantic yacht behind you, you can quickly air up your water toys or something like that. Of course, you could also air up your tires if need be. Really nice feature. The retail price on this truck is just over $216,000. That's including a road tax for a big commercial vehicle like this, over 26,000 pounds. But it's got bling bling. Look at this grill. I mean, it's really cool. Uh, I think it just adds that punch because uh, you can recognize this truck as a freight liner, but this adds just that nice touch of style, including this nice white paint job, which I quite like. It's okay, it's okay, Chuck. We'll be driving really soon, okay? Uh, I just wanted to show you guys these tow hooks in the front. They're giant and they remind me like a bighorn sheep out in the mountains so you can pull your buddy out of the ditch right here. So how do you get into this beast? Well, there are these steps. Once again, diamond plate over here looks very nice. And you just keep climbing because you got a ways to go. This truck is like 10 or 11 feet tall. So you see how big this truck is, but it's also very luxurious on the inside. It's just all custom done. And this is 
one of the reasons why it costs as much as it does luxurious leather and check it out air suspension seat when you're driving this truck it's just like floating on a cloud because it has air suspension in the rear leaves up front air seat in here the cab is mounted on some air springs so it's actually a really comfortable ride when you compare it to another commercial truck the luxury features start with these captain chairs up front nice armrest perforated leather stitching a lot of adjustment and both of these seats in the front can go way up so you can ride in the sky nice and cushy or way down so you can be like a low rider just chilling if you're hauling your giant trailer or your boat with your family you gotta have cubby holes and cup holders this truck has it gigantic spacer in here four cup holders two in the front two in the rear of this rear console lots more storage up here if you have extra items maybe a phone or some maps or something a couple of books you can put them up here and of course on the passenger side also this is still a freightliner interior but it has very nice trim and lots of light so you have kind of a map reading lights up here you also have a red light that commercial trucks and other vehicles like police vehicles use for looking at something in the night red light is a lot easier on your eyes of course the driver has the same features up here and there's even more light up in the ceiling but i gotta show you the rear seat it's really cool when you open the doors you have more light in the ceiling it's pretty nice looking the rear seat is a bench but it's actually uh, more than a bench it's a couch and it has a secret that i'll show you in a second but if you thought your crew cab pickup truck like an f-150 or a silverado or a ram was spacious it has nothing on this truck look at the amount of leg space headroom and this couch seat also has cup holders and i promised you the secret feature right so here it is this rear couch converts into a futon or a bed so it goes all the way flat and i told you i'm just over 6'2 right okay so i can take care of the seat belt and then if i go diagonally like this or just straight up i actually have space that's pretty remarkable because you're not going to get space like this in a crew cab regular pickup truck it's just too narrow and the secret button to make it into a bed is right here well since you have a couch in the back you have to have a tv you do it's a fairly large screen and yes of course you got to charge your iphones your androids your tablets you have this you have two usb ports here two here so four in the back and there's two more up front this truck basically is a house on wheels so of course you have a premium stereo system you got your coat hanger and you also have additional storage space behind this rear seat you just have to be careful there's some wiring down there but you can in theory store a few more things in the back comfort is a big thing so in the back seat you do have these vents for air conditioning and heating where you can direct them at yourself and of course uh, the controls for the HVAC are up front. Guys, here I want to show you the gauges as I accelerate so you can kind of see how the truck is shifting and how it's behaving under acceleration. Here we go, I'm full stop. Now I'm going to full throttle. stoplight drag races against a dually but what you will do is just kind of get down the highway in a nice easy fashion because this is a commercial grade vehicle you have to have some additional stuff for example the fire extinguisher is here and when you're on the road obviously you need to bring some extra stuff with you if you're traveling in the winter in Colorado for example you need to have tire chains you need to have emergency triangles if you get stopped for some reason on the side of a highway and on and on and on 
you just have to bring more when you have a truck this big. I promised you the extra USBs. There are two cables up here that you can connect to and your HVAC heating and con air conditioning controls are here. They're very basic, but they're just very simple and easy to use. But wait, there is more. Two additional USB ports in the dashboard. And you might be wondering what this is all about. Well, let me begin. Let's fire this beast up. And the ignition key is actually on my left, like a semi truck would be. It comes to life very, very easily. Of course, here's your infotainment system, which is a Kenwood. It has a special Garmin navigation. So it has all the technology features you may have expected from a luxurious trucks. Um, and also up here, check this out. Rear view camera. So this camera that's pointing at the bed is on all the time, no matter if you're driving forward or reversing, but it also gives you additional options. So if you mount more cameras, you can kind of cycle through them. Right now only one is hooked up, but you can put them side by side, have different orientation, up to four cameras you can equip this truck with. And that's necessary for safety, of course. Take a look at the steering wheel. It's gigantic. It's bigger than your regular pickup truck. And it's also adjustable. There's a little pedal in here, so you can kind of adjust it, make yourself comfortable. And if you're sitting back, you can still see your gauges and you have a commanding view of the road ahead. The truck has a fully automated transmission, so the, your brake and accelerator are here. This tiny pedal is to adjust your steering wheel. Whoop, whoop. Actually, you put, can put it out of the way if, in case you're doing work or something in your while you're stationary, you have an option to do that. The ignition key is on the left, and it's done so not for racing. Uh, old race cars used to do this, and Porsche does this still. But it's actually, if you're standing outside the truck, you can actually lean in without getting in and start the vehicle and let it warm up. So it's just a convenience feature. This is what I'm talking about, the ignition key. Standing next to a truck, it's really easy to reach in. You don't have to climb in if you want to warm up the engine. You can just start it right here. Right here are your transmission controls. It's a button push system. This is a heavy duty 3200 series Allison transmission. You may have heard of Allison making transmissions for like GM, Chevrolet and GMC pickup trucks, but this is the next level up. Still six speeds, still fully automated. And in order to go in gear, uh, basically you could put your foot in the brake, select drive, and then you have to release your air brake. Boom. Now you're ready to move. And this truck is equipped with air brakes. It's not hydraulic brakes like in your regular pickup truck. So you have to be mindful of that, but the brakes are very, very powerful. This is a modern truck, so it does have power windows. You have the four switches right here to control your passenger side, front and rear. This is kind of very similar to a Jeep Wrangler. So if you've ever been in a Jeep, you're very used to controls like this. Of course, your power locks. And then we get into the great stuff. If you've seen TFL truck before, you've seen us review one of these Freightliner Summit hauler trucks already, but that truck was a two-wheel drive. The new part in this truck is right here. This is your all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive control. Yes, I did say all-wheel drive. This transfer case allows you to basically run in all-wheel drive mode, which means rear wheel drive biased so rear wheels are pushing you along and if it senses slippage it will engage the front axle or you can lock it by pushing this button now we have basically permanent four wheel drive then you can actually select the transfer case between high and low gearing which means on a regular highway at highway speed you'll be running in high range but for crawling off road, let's say a dirt road approaching your ranch or farm, you could put it into low range. When you go into low range, it actually tells you up here, yes, it has a locking rear differential. No locker up front, but the rear can be locked. That's really good. For example, if you're pulling a giant boat out of the water and you need extra traction, 
always nice to have or maybe in a snowy condition as well and this is a fun one the rear air suspension can go up or down there's a regen button the mirrors are heated and you also have your just kind of a marker light switch you can put this truck in cruise control you have a trailer brake controller which is this Takancha P3 Prodigy so you can control it here pretty easily there's a manual override for trailer brakes and also you have really powerful engine braking you can control it from low to high and if you want to see how this works in real life on TFL truck we also did an Ike Gauntlet world's toughest towing test in one of these big rigs and you can check it out and learn more about it on the left here the gauges are pretty standard of course you have your tack your tachometer to show the rpm of your engine you have your transmission temp your coolant temp and oil pressure really important to know exactly what your engine is doing and transmission your speed of course but here a couple of unique gauges um, it has two air tank systems and basically the air compressor is engine driven so whenever the engine is running your air compressor is functional and you have redundancy because you have air brakes air suspension air seats air cab all of it needs air and you have your PSI your pressure in both tanks right here in front of you this Kenwood infotainment screen and infotainment system may look standard but it has additional features for trucking for example it has additional information for rest areas truck stops way stations so instead of searching Google or something like this you can actually easily access some of the trucking information right here in front of you and go to the nearest stop when you're on the highway it also has for example a trip meter that gives you some of the vitals from your last trip and I promise you this was not me I was not going 84 miles per hour in this truck I'm just here near Trans West right now if you don't know semi trucks you might be wondering what this is well this is basically a way to test the brakes on your trailer if your trailer had air brakes enabled like any proper semi truck this puppy has an air horn <laughs> oh my gosh it's loud I want to do two more tests turning radius test because although this truck is massive much longer and wider and taller than any other pickup truck on the road it's supposed to turn remarkably well So here's what happened. The F-250C behind me is a truck that's not a long bed. 160 inch wheelbase. It was able to make this turn right here in this dirt lot uh, with relative ease. This truck right here, the Summit Hauler, is a long wheelbase version and TransWest and Summit Body do this for a couple big reasons. First, stability for towing and also comfort of ride and this truck was so close to make the same turn that that F-250 did I would say that if you had a longer wheelbase dually truck like an F-350 and this they would turn in about the same space it's hiding another secret back here behind this plate is basically a regular hitch this one is rated to up to 20,000 pounds of towing that's basically what uh, like a one-ton dually can also do but you also have your wiring and everything to tow nicely and easily all right so let's do this calculation the truck weighs about 16,500 pounds it has about a 30,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating that means the payload of this truck is around 14,000 pounds seven tons this truck can carry which is very impressive I want to discuss one more topic about big trucks and it's dually rear wheels versus single and this truck right here is running what's called super singles basically in the back axle instead of having two tires on each side you have just one and there's two schools of thought on this first big truckers are in two camps 
There are guys that love the traditional 18 wheel configuration with duals all the way around on the back axles and the trailer axles because it offers a safety net. If you lose pressure in one tire, you still have the other dual, the other tire to get off to the shoulder or maybe an exit and go away from traffic and just stop and be able to change the tire safely. Um, but then, with a super single tire like on this truck, there are several other benefits. First of all, you don't have to buy as many tires. So you're saving a little bit of money when you have to maintain this truck. Second, you can carry a little bit more weight. Actually, these new super single tires are built in such a fashion that they're very, very strong, very durable, and can carry a lot of weight. And maximum GBW, like I said, gross vehicle weight on this truck is over 30,000 pounds. And also, there is a little bit less road resistance because you don't have as many tires touching the ground. In theory, you could get a slightly better fuel efficiency out of this big rig. So if you drive a lot cross country and put you know tens and tens of thousands of miles a year on this truck, it may be very smart to have a single tire like this on this truck because less road resistance, rolling resistance, that means you can get a little bit better efficiency. When getting on the road in a truck this size, you have to do what's called a pre-trip inspection. Basically making sure the truck is safe and all of the components are in working order. And it's super simple on a truck this big because you can see everything. And you can basically study this really carefully. Of course you have your battery cables, an airline here going to your air uh, system for your air brakes. You can adjust it using this little tab or check it. Oil system filter is right here you can clearly see it in this container your power steering fluid is right here very easy to reach on the passenger side once again really easy to maintain your air filter for the engine intake your coolant uh, and by the way huge capacities on everything oil and coolant and you can of course monitor your levels here down here is your windshield wiper fluid hood closing uh, and actually uh, one person can do this very, very easily. Doesn't take almost any effort. In fact, you kind of have to push down on this HUD to actually close it. When you're dealing with a truck this size, um, commercial regulations come into play if you're using it for work. And commercial regulations say you always have to have at least three points of contact when getting into a truck. So you have two handles, step, then you can grab a steering wheel, keep stepping, so safety is very important, this truck has it. Yeah, I know this truck is as big as a house and it costs as much as a house, but I hope you can see that if you do need something like this, this is the truck that pretty much no other truck can beat on the road, not just on maneuverability, but also carrying a lot of weight in here. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real world big truck reviews. Several months ago, Mr. Truck and I tested a two-wheel drive version of the Summit Hauler and it performed really great with a big trailer in the mountains and I really like the truck because it's big, tall and you feel like you're the king of the road and uh, then I saw this one. The four-wheel drive truck is taller, bigger, balder, and I like it even more. I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can double mortgage my home so I can purchase this one because it's just like a big Tonka toy. So awesome. <laughs>